Tesla is having historic moves right now and a lot of people are asking themselves the same question. How do I capitalize off of this crazy event? In this video, we're gonna be talking about the whole Tesla situation, some what you need to know for the short term and the long term, and just other important things to keep in mind going forward. We have an awesome video today, and we're not wasting any time, so let's get right into it. Looking at Tesla stock, this thing has been falling quicker than like every other stock out there especially relative to its size. If you look at a heat map over the past year, Tesla stock is down 70% basically. And over like over December alone, it's down like 40 to 50%. This thing is just selling off more and more and more every single day. Now, a lot of opportunity also comes from this. But before we get into that, we have to talk about why this is happening. There are basically a bunch of things happening all at once. Of course, we have the entire economy struggling a little bit. We have rates rising across the board, which definitely hurts uh, the present valuation of Tesla and all other companies out there. So when you have rates rising, you have the economy getting worse. You have Tesla struggling a little bit in China uh, to sell some of their vehicles, but also cutting back some of their production at their Shanghai facility. That's also notable and something to keep in mind. At the same time, we have Elon Musk and Twitter and a lot of drama going on in that sense. Elon Musk is selling off a ton of shares, like billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of shares. So that puts direct selling pressure onto the stock. On top of that, over the past couple of years, there's been nothing but insane amounts of leverage and bullishness, not only with the whole market, but especially with Tesla stock. And with that, you know, when you have periods where the stock doesn't only go up, the sell-offs tend to be absolutely brutal because you have margin calls. So the people who've been owning this company for however long and who only God knows what price, when the stock falls down, not only does that you know, make them, you know, have, have a bad sentiment about the stock. But in some situations, if they are using margin, they can be forced to sell their stock. And when that happens, it makes the stock go even lower. And then that causes even more people to get margin calls, which makes the stock go even lower. And it's like a giant snowball effect of just panic and selling pressure and just forced selling. And that results in plunging stock prices. So there's a bunch of things happening all at once that are playing into this crazy event. What's very interesting is Tesla stock is actually in the middle of its worst drawdown ever. Like literally its worst drawdown ever. In the past, from the high point to the lowest point of any sell-off that Tesla has faced, it has normally fallen at the worst point, like around 50%. Right now, we can see we are in that 72% zone, which is the worst sell-off Tesla has ever had by a good amount from its high point to the lowest point of a, of a crash after that high point, you can say. So... We're seeing a truly historic sell-off in that sense, and with that comes opportunity. Now, this happens for basically all stocks like this, but it's definitely worth pointing out specifically to Tesla. So if we go to, let's say, the S&P 500 first to demonstrate the main point. During any time of significant amounts of panic or fear or selling pressure, volatility increases. So if we look at the COVID crash for the S&P 500 overall, believe it or not, that's actually when we saw some of the biggest green days in a long, long time. When you have some of the most, like, when you have some of the craziest amounts of fear, you also have some of the biggest green days that you'll ever see because volatility overall increases quite a bit. You know, looking more at this COVID crash, we are seeing green candles that haven't been seen for years and years and years. So the main point is that during periods of increased selling pressure, you also have significant moves to the upside. What's very interesting with Tesla stock whether it is a significant upside move or a significant downside move, it is almost always followed by extreme volatility. For example, if we look in like February of 2020, Tesla stock had an absolutely insane run up, and that was of course followed by an insane downtrend, but you know, that also happened at the same time when the overall market was tanking. So I guess you can you choose to 
um, you know, choose if you want to look at that example. But you could go throughout any other example in Tesla's history, like especially this one at the end of August of 2020. It had an amazing uptrend that was extremely volatile and momentum filled, where it actually made brand new all time highs. And then just a couple days later, it had an absolutely insane sell off, right? And you can do this for any major run up or run down in Tesla stock's history. So what I'm saying right now is looking at Tesla stock, given how much it's falling off, do not be surprised if at some point, whether it's in a week, a couple days or whatever, if we have an absolutely insane couple green days because every single other time in Tesla's past and honestly for the stock market overall, periods of heightened volatility or you know ha have some of the biggest candles both the upside and the downside in the current period of volatility is very historic you know so you have to keep that in mind whether you are looking at tesla for an upside play or a downside play you have to be mentally prepared that this stock is going to swing in a very big way especially in the short term so you have to make sure you're mentally prepared for that uh, getting past that point, looking at Tesla more on a long-term basis, obviously it is tanking down quite a bit and it's tanking down at like a very rapid pace, but just because a company is falling doesn't automatically make it a good buy, right? There's more you have to do behind the scenes to see if that investment is actually worth it. And looking at Tesla's valuation, while it has tanked down quite a bit, I would definitely not call it undervalued right now. While Tesla's growing a lot, while they have a lot of potential to grow even more in the future, and while they have a lot of awesome software and technology, that doesn't necessarily make them an automatic buy. If we look at one of the most popularly, one of the most popular uh, fundamental metrics, you can say, uh, that is the price to earnings ratio, the PE ratio. Tesla's PE ratio right now is around 35. Kinda high. <laughs> it was a lot higher in the past and it's been falling nonstop. Uh, if we look at this uh, chart all the way at the bottom right here, the blue line represents the PE ratio. It peaked in 2021 around 1400, which is, it, it's a topic for another video, but <laughs> peaked in around 1400 in 2021. And ever since that point, it has been falling more and more and more. It fell all the way down to 1000, then 800, and then 400, and 200, and 100, and now it's now it's at 35, right? The main thing is that Tesla can increase their earnings in profit as much as they want, but the main question is, at what multiple will people continue to pay for Tesla stock? You know, a couple of years ago, they were paying a price to earnings ratio of 400, and now they're paying a price to earnings ratio of 35. So in five years from now, is the PE ratio gonna be 20? Is it gonna be 10? Is it gonna be five? Is it gonna be 80? That's the multi-million dollar question in this situation. Now, what some people might do is look at Tesla's competitors. Now, I know some people are gonna freak out, some Tesla bulls are gonna freak out about this and rage, but if you look at some of their competitors, some other car companies, like let's say Ford, that has a PE ratio of five. You look at GM, that has a PE ratio of six. You might look at Toyota, that has a PE ratio of 10. A lot of people like to claim Tesla's not a car company, but most of their revenue comes from cars. Yes, they have some awesome software and they can definitely grow into that. And over time, that can bring in a lot of revenue. But for how it stands right now, Tesla's a car company. <laughs> so that's just how it is. But even if you were to make the argument that Tesla is somehow not a car company, uh, you might look at, I don't know, maybe some tech stocks to look at PE, at some comparable PE ratios. So, uh, Apple has a PE ratio of 21. Google has a PE ratio of around 17. Microsoft has a PE ratio of 25. So even on that basis, Tesla is not undervalued. <laughs> so, and I know PE ratio is not everything. There's a lot more that goes into it um, without a doubt, but it's a nice starting point just to get an idea of if Tesla is trading at a decent level right now. Of course, anything can happen in the short term. There's a ton of volatility right now, but for the long term, I'm not feeling super confident that Tesla is at the bottom and that it is an amazing buy right now. Yes, I would not be surprised at all if it bounced up and had an awesome you know, couple weeks in the short term because that's what happened 
basically every other time there's a giant sell-off of this magnitude. But at the same time, it's not necessarily a screaming buy, at least to me right now. Um, now, getting to, getting getting into some specific calculations, um, it, it all depends on your assumptions going forward. Let's say you were to assume that Tesla was going to grow their revenue continuously 35% year after year for five years straight and have profit margins of 14% and trade at a PE ratio of 16 and have a free cash flow margin of 8% and a price of free cash flow of 15 all while you required an annual rate of return of 13%, you would have to pay around $111 or less for Tesla stock. It's around that price point right now, but those assumptions are pretty bold. You know, right now, or I guess we could say for the fiscal year of 2021, Tesla had in, in a total revenue of just under $54 billion. That's awesome, and they're growing a ton. That is absolutely awesome. But at the same time, when you when you assume a, a, an annual revenue compounded growth rate of 35% year after year after year after year, that would bring Tesla's total revenue to $335 billion. $335 billion. So it's like, if you think in five years from now, Tesla's gonna have an annual revenue of $335 billion right now, and they're gonna satisfy all these other base case assumptions, then yeah, Tesla's not at a bad level to start averaging in. But again, those are some bold assumptions, you know, and only God knows if they'll be able to sustain 35% compounded revenue growth. Like, that is no easy task. So determining whether or not Tesla's a buy right now all depends on your assumptions. Look at this base case right now. If, the, if, you, if you believe in the base case and you could adjust these numbers however you want, then you can maybe justify buying Tesla right now for the long term, but it all depends on your assumptions, you know, and that's very important to keep in mind. So keep that in mind. For the short term, though, if you're, you know, for the short term, I think that will be where a ton of opportunity is at. Um, for my advanced traders out there, if you sell or write put options right now, um, that is a pretty good opportunity given levels of implied vol volatility are high and they're on the rise and the stock is also down quite a bit. But, but even for like my short term day traders and swing traders out there, you know, like we looked at just a couple minutes ago, during every other point of, of mass fear or mass volatility, like we're having now with Tesla, it is almost always followed by continued levels of volatility. So it's like there will be a ton of opportunity with Tesla over the next couple weeks in bullish and bearish ways. Uh, so buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be a wild, wild ride for me. Um, I'm not really going to look at buying Tesla until it gets closer to like that maybe like high 80s mark. At that point, I will reevaluate and consider buying. It is not going to be an automatic buy once it gets to like the high 80s, but I will consider looking at it on, in a deeper way once it gets to around that level. Um, it may never get there, we will see. But if I do buy this, I want to be pretty confident that the valuation I am buying it at is actually a good valuation and something I'm comfortable with. So let me know your thoughts on Tesla. This stock has had a wild, wild ride all year long and the craziness is not going to slow down anytime soon if you want to calculate your own price targets for tesla or any other stock out there as well as get access to smart money trades uh statement basically all the data you can imagine for long-term investing make sure to check out that first link in the description and the comments down below. It's absolutely awesome. We are cheaper than all of our competitors for this software. Uh, you can use it on your phone, tablet, computer. Uh, you can cancel at any time. It's definitely worth checking out. Again, it'll be that first link in the description and the comments down below. Besides that, let's have an amazing end to 2022.